Where was I? Volume two crashed. So it's probably crashed on there. Freaking out. So in theory, if everything has worked correctly. No, what am I talking about? I haven't even called that function that class state yet. Ugh, that won't work. I have coffee and I have smarties. Words, thing. And then it crashes. Day two of making the tutorial. What am I doing today? Today, I think I'm going to do where you choose. So, the scout, when he takes. When the scout takes two cards, he flips two cards on the city deck. Um, and you can take one. I am going to do it so the fours are hard coded values. Specific cards. So this should also work as well. When the hero kills a dead, the dead it should be killing should be a specific card as well. So I think this is where I need to. The actions are made up of a number of steps. So for example, the scout. So we'd select a card and flip it. I want to be like, right, that card is actually this card. So where and what do I overwrite to force that? So I guess the cards it finds in the city deck, um, which would be, for example, like this step. I want to say, oh, no, that's not right. It's going to be this card. I could add a step in, like a tutorial step, to say replace that card with this card, but that will only ever be used for the scout and the hero, and they're both find cards, I believe. Is that the hero outside as well? Yeah. Because it wants to be when that card is selected. That is where it gets changed. Yeah, I'd say so. So I could always do something in the action controller to say when a select step is returned, if it's the tutorial, don't do that, do this. And then I'm not modifying the step data. I'm not having to, mod I'm not having to modify an individual step. I might as well duplicate this um, and override it, um, or write it, inherit it, and have an action controller tutorial. Same as how I did the other classes. But if it's only going to be for one step, I could just put like an if tutorial in there rather than a. Yeah, let's say it's time to create another class. Well, I will have to pass in the the cards that I want it to be. Which is why I also think yeah, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna create an action controller tutorial. I have to make sure when I'm renaming things I also uh, renaming classes I also get the constructor. I tend to like to use um normal C sharp classes as opposed to classes that inherit from mono behaviour. If, it, if a class doesn't need to be attached to an object, doesn't need to be serialized or have anything like that, have its own update function, then I just make a class. And if I need an update function, I call it from another mono behavior. But I try to have as few mono behaviors as possible. I think it's yeah, so like a state controller. So like at this point, I want to be like, no, I'm a tutorial. Instantiate tutorial. I was going to put an if tutorial do it there. That's silly because I have like a specific tutorial state controller. It just means whenever I call start, I'll have to put an appropriate um, class instantiation. I can do that. But instead of normal, we want tutorial. We also understand see at the beginning of every turn as well. So that everything is fresh, there's no um, 
anything, there's nothing stored in memory that could be causing havoc when these steps and the actions ex execute. Okay, so we don't want those. Get rid of that. Okay, so now that's instantiated in the right place. So when I say like execute action, I probably want to say if it's the tutorial passing like change the way the begin execution works. Like there's a prepare action which gives it the step list. So I probably want to like prepare tutorial. Pass it in there. So then that gets cached there, and then that needs to be uh, that needs to actually be called. So my action plus there, I probably also want a tutorial version. I'm just going to keep it in this class though, because I also have the client and local in there. I'll just pop it on the bottom. I'm just going to inherit from the action controller local. I don't need to copy all this. Copy that. So I'm going to put it on the bottom so it's out of the way so I don't get confused between the client version as well. Probably need a constructor there too. Here we will pass in the tutorial data. I guess I want to cache that too. So then here, now when I call start, I think. Actually, I don't think I need to do that. I've just created all of that and I don't think I need to. Because like I was saying earlier, I have that prepare step, uh, sorry, prepare action, and that gets called, yeah, in a completely different class. So that's called like outside, so I just do the same thing. So for example, play card, I had a tutorial version, and I inherited an idea. Okay then. I was trying to avoid doing all this stuff, but I'll... Just have to inherit and override that. So I'll still follow everything in there. But prior to that, where I prepare the action, I'm going to do a similar thing in the tutorial. I'm going to cast it because it's actually the tutorial version of the action controller we want. Tutorial and I give it tutorial action and then I guess tutorial data I will add more stuff into there say so, right we want this card to do this so I guess it would be action card data which represents the cards we want to do stuff So when we're creating some new tutorial data, we now have a place to put stuff so the scout. When he flips something, he flips two cards. So I've created an array, so I can put two cards into the action card data. The hero, when he flips something, it'll only be one card, so I just pass one thing into the array. That sounds logical. So now I want to override, sorry, um, override the select step. Because when that returns, At this point, I'm going to say, okay, switch the cards with the fake switchy thing. So I'm going to create a virtual function on select step uh, 
finished. And this is going to be a callback. So why is a selected object? So whenever this action, the step finishes um, executed, it calls the callback with the select object, the object that we selected, because it's the like select step. Instead of doing that, so that's code is popped into. I should probably maybe I shouldn't do it that way actually. Because if it uses step data as well. There we go, so we'll call that. But then that means I can override that in my action controller tutorial. So the hero would be a generally easy one to do. As in, there's only going to be one thing inside that um, action card data array. However, in the scout outside, there's going to be two. And I, the step doesn't care whether it's the first select step or it's the second select step. It doesn't care about that. It doesn't need to know. But because we're doing the tutorial action override stuff, we want to know. I don't think it's going to be easy. The stored selection list is everything that we've um, selected and it gets cached as well, so we always have it on hand. But I don't think it's going to be that easy because we select city decks and then select cards from them. So I can't just be like, oh, that one. Yeah, let's do it for one first. And then once we get that working, then I will handle doing two cards. Yeah, so first we want to check if the selected object is a cloud. And um, we'll let it get action type. It's a card. And if it is. Um, so when we did the city deck, was it take city deck tutorial? Was it in this one? Yeah. Basically, we're going to do exactly the same as that. I'm just going to copy and paste it all. So we find the tutorial action dot get action card type. We're just going to hard code just the first one to begin with. Card type. It does the same thing where it instantiates a card based on what type it is. We said it to be face down because it'll be on top of the seat deck, which are always face down. And then the original card is actually selected objects, so we change its position and rotation. But then we also change our well, selected object, card object, card object. So card object, I believe, is the card cache, yeah. So that's where I need to change that to be this new. This new card because we've got over that one, that should all be okay. Oh, I can just overwrite it like this. So selected object is a new action result. Uh, So we'll say the action result type is card. The card cache is this guy here. And the location would be the original selected object location. Have I got that constructor right? Yes, I have. Okay. 
let's just try it and see if then the hero, when he kills someone, wait, no, that won't work because I haven't actually filled in the data. I keep forgetting, I keep forgetting to fill in the data. Okay, so now hopefully something will happen. Nope. Probably want to check there that the tutorial action that this exists. Because, yeah, when other cards get blurred. Mm -hmm. Because if it's invalid, we've got that crash. So, because so the cycle, when they get blurred, when she gets blurred, that she will have a select inside her. Um, action list as well, but we don't need, we don't care what she turns over, I don't think. Oh, we don't actually care if it's a seductor study. Okay, whatever. Nope, something's still wrong. Oh, I'm not sure when it's no either. got through there. Tot's fine. Okay, so the hero. We know this is currently a dead. That's a hero. Oh, and I didn't destroy the pre the old card either. But I do do that here. That's what I was missing. That's one thing I was missing. So that's it destroyed there. And also, that was it turned over the hero. Because I probably. Yeah. Yep. Um, that wants to be this. So, copied and pasted that. I didn't check what I was copied and pasted in. Maybe I should remove it from the list when it's done so when the scout comes and he has two cards the first card will have been nulled out and then the second card just keep going until you find a valid index that sounds reasonable I'm going to do that Index. Start back as a Let's just replace all these before I forget. Index. So then we check action index is less than and it is valid. We can do all that. So I'll basically just loop through um, check whether action index is valid. not null, sorry if it is null, but it's still less than, increment it, check again, if it is null, <coughs> sorry if it isn't null, <coughs> so that now I'm it, um, we'll come up here. Okay, so let's just have the scout stuff in as well, because then I can continue playing and just test that. Right. Yep. 
because it's a struck desert. I also didn't know that because I think. Um, if I change the action type to null. Um, oh wait, it's not. Hang on. Oh, it's card info, not act a tutorial. And card info is a struct. Um, I hate that about structs. I'm just gonna make a nullable type. Yeah, I'm just gonna make it a nullable type. Um, which I believe, do I put it here? So by making this type nullable, it can either be its value or null. It's kind of like, so nullable types, for example, if you wanted a goal to be true, false, or null, you haven't set it yet, you need to put the little question mark um, just after it's a uh, variable de declaration. There. I'm probably cheating. It's probably invalid. I'm sure I've tried making a nullable struct before, which I guess it is just a class. Kind of, but it behaves differently in memory, I believe. I like nullable types, they're useful. Okay, so now I play the hero here. And it was a seductress, so I get her into my hand. Hey! Okay, cool. What a depression. Attach it to Unity. Just to see if sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you're lucky enough that the debugger will catch the null reference. Didn't. Am I not removing the correct? Th I don't think I'm removing the correct thing. So I think the base, so I, have a ref I keep a reference on the base to where what things are. Yeah, so that, because I destroyed it, I want to remove it from So I need to remove the original card before I destroy it from where it previously came from. We should do have a control ready for it, I believe. Mm. Remove card from original location. In this case, we know it's coming from the base. So I can just do something along these lines. It's fine. So that's it being removed. Then I also want to add the new reference to it in. Uh, this card. Selected object dot card object. That's where I create the new cache here. The base position. Oh, I can just give it the selected object. Card orientation is going to be face down. I don't want it to actually move. It might. So I suppose I could say if you move the power back, it's no. Then it's that function. 
extension I want. I still haven't rolled out the Lowell Scout, or rather the tutorial for the action for the Scout. So after here. We also can't do that because that's a getter, not a setter. Action card data. Use that instead. All right. Um, here it did look like he was in the wrong place at times, like we were intersecting. Let's just continue and see what the scout does. Well, that's still wrong. <laughs> hmm. Didn't breakpoint. Is this not a select step? Oh, it is. Returns a city deck. So let's go to that side. How is the city deck? Select one. It should be coming back with this. Step seven. So that's the select step. Let's just check the original base card. Ah, uh, if it skips the player input, which it does, that's what it's doing. Okay, maybe I should just overwrite this as well. Okay, so let's try that out with the scout again. Scout. No! Why is it still not working? Okay, let's put some more brick points in. And try again. What am I missing? Such a correct point, right? Oh my, wow, that's probably not helpful either. So maybe it wasn't ever even getting into that, that function, which is why I know that was working. Hopefully. Right, there we go. Break pointed. Good. Let's just take that break point off. Yeah, no reference. I should have followed that broken through. What was it moaning about? One, one, two, one. Ah, because I automatically assumed previously that it was going to be coming from the player base, but no. So. Okay, this time. Oh, three. Oh, because this is it. <laughs> uh, okay, so if I just put. So I want that to happen at that point. I'm just gonna. I should start reading through the rest of my code before I just save it and automatically try and compile it. 
since I have all this trouble. Okay, so um, I actually then want to add it to this deck. Add card local. So that's the same thing that's going to be the selected card because that's the new one I just created. Orientation, face down, no call pack, just do it. City deck, ah, just add card. So then I won't play the animation. Any of that. Right. Okay, this time. I don't know why that's under the oh, let's have that out later. <gasps> Fuel? Doctor! Gas. Okay, cool. Um hmm. we kinda wanna force them to tear the doctor because we need the doctor later on. Uh, never rock it. I guess because there's a third select card step in there, which I haven't accounted for. Okay, change of plans. Um, because the scout pro uh, gives the option of choosing a card, which we don't want, we are going to use scavenger instead. She lets you she still lets you take a card from the city deck but it's only one card rather than a choice of cards so we don't have to force a player to choose and then choose the wrong one. Oh, so the scavenger instead of the scout, that's correct. So then we still play the hero, exactly the same. But it's still the seductress. We play the food, but now we have to play the scavenger outside. And it's a doctor. Cool. Everything works fine. Apart from the fact something else breaks. Okay, what is meant to happen at that point? Ah, we're meant to pick up the hero at that point. So why is that breaking? Line 170 in the player base. What did I say, 179? So the card list is incorrect in this base. Side, survivor hero card. So dead, dead scar. Well, that looks right. Let's just get rid of where it plans to run through that again. I want to pop that there as well. So I don't think I go into the base at any other time, so that shouldn't be too early. Okay, so the scavenger. That is that's wrong as well. I wonder why. Did I take it from that one earlier? I did to know. Probably aren't removing it. It's probably the same thing. I'm just okay. I'll have to go back and fix that. So I'll take the doctor. Again, at this point, once the doctor's taken, this is where we pick up the hero. So this card list is wrong. Right inside slot two. Wait, that might not be wrong yet. Ah, three points. So that's fine. That was to zero. What's it breaking on? Ah, there. Was that the sacrifice pile? 
I hover over? Yeah, what's wrong with the sacrifice pile? Card list is null. Well, I guess I should have had it here as well. I wonder why I don't. Because that's probably breaking the main game as well. Okay. Um, so where's my take me set your deck? Yeah. Okay, so I also wanted to remove it, but didn't I? So I guess on the base, I must remove it somewhere from its original place. It draws the card. Just draw on the card and not remove it. Yeah, it does. So that should remove it from that C deck. Let's just let's just do a quick test. Okay, we'll take it from the first C deck, I think. This one. So 0, 12, 24, 36. Oh yeah, look, it removed more than it should have. 36 should still be there. I am removing too many things. Look, I'm doing it twice, that's probably why. So it's calling both the tutorial and... Well, that's not good. Start on three, because then that would be correct. It's start there, and I wasn't paying attention. No, I was thinking. Okay, so at this point, we'll take something from the C deck. Let's take it from this C deck. So there's five cards in there 38, 36, 24, 12, 0. And there's still the correct amount of cards in there 0, 12, 24. So that's that fixed. Oh, I killed the wrong thing. I hear I was dead. Let's carry on. Um, so yeah, it's, it's that fixes that issue. Hmm. Because the next thing I'm meant to do is put a lucky scare, but I don't have that in my hand. Where do I get lucky scare from? Right, okay, so the Psycho, when she kills something, that should be, at the minute it's just a dead, but we force it again to be uh, a stop card. So the Psycho inside, it's lucky as scare, let's get that into a hand, good. Now I have to play the lucky as scare. This step hasn't been implemented. Right, so that's the next thing. So I didn't implement the stop step push balls in here. Do I need to hard code it? Oh, sorry, do I need to create a stop card tutorial? Card does get passed in, and at that point I should need to hard code anything because there's only one dead survivor that you can revive. Didn't save it. Scavenger is the doctor. Pick up the hero. Play a lucky escape. Uh, so we save the scavenger. is meant to be sacrificing the doctor. Yeah, why doesn't that work? Does the stop card not 
go to the correct. Probably it isn't actually. It's the stop card once it's finished. Finish execute. Finish execution. Uh, go straight back to the carousel. Not. Okay, well, in that case, when I put the stop card, I will have to remove the. So, you know, in the finished turn, I'm sorry, if you're finished action, I remove that there. I'll have to do that in the stop card. But that should be okay because I don't actually use the stop card. There's nothing, there's, there's no, it doesn't need that tutorial action. So, yes. That's fine. Should be anyway, maybe. Okay, so now if I go to sacrifice the doctor. What does sacrifice and the doctor do? <laughs> I think when I sacrifice the power, when I'm killing things, I have to. Okay, so the Dot sacrifice actually shuffle the scrub and take eight cards, put all the survivors in the stockpile and then return the rest. So that's where I should have had some when I was killing dead. I only had the doctor in the scrap pile. Hmm. Right, so we changed some stuff, so that should work better now. Let's try it and make sure that we've got everything. We play the hero. Who gets the seductress? Oh, sorry, who gets the wise man now? Then we put the food in the stockpile. We play the scavenger outside. She now gets fuel. We pick up the hero, scavenger dies, so we play Lucky Escape, which revives the scavenger. And at that point, we're meant to sacrifice the hero. Okay, so we could, but why? Oh, I was going to say things were going horribly wrong there. Okay, but that's good. So, right, the stuff removed. <laughs> So why couldn't I sack the hero? Have I copied across something incorrectly? Yes. So that should be the hero in the sacrifice slot. Okay, let's try that again. I should play the hero. What was if I play the scavenger? It will let me. Okay, I'm going to add that to my to-do list. Okay, let's pretend that works for now. And we just run through to make sure that everything is set up. Correctly now. Okay, now I can sacrifice the hero. Yeah, and then play the wise man inside. So let's add everything to my stockpile. But then I'm going to play forward planning. Which at the minute doesn't do anything because I didn't hard code those. So let's do that. And I'm going to play forward planning. So I can flip. So fuel. Fuel. An event. And then it crashes. <laughs> Uh, okay, I've got these the wrong way around. So the action index is two, but there's only two in the array. So it's looking for the third element in the array, which doesn't exist. So I should be checking that first to make sure the action index is less than the length, which is not. So that's where. Okay, that would be why that's broken. Let's try that again. Okay, forward planning inside. It's a fuel. It's an event. It's not a crash. 
Not a crash. Oh, these are all just dead. Uh, I should probably make them something. Because this will happen. I don't matter. It's now the event because everything moves inside. And at that point, that is where the game should base overrun. Instead, it crashes. That's okay. Players take control of the tutorial to start. 213. Ah, yeah. So the breach happens. But Breach still calls finished action, but now there should be nothing there. So it's trying to remove something that can't. It's broken, I think. I do have the previous state was an event, which it should be. Yeah. So if it's an event, it's not an action that we're saying has to happen. I mean, we're making it so it has to happen. But we're not, it's not an editorial data, so we don't have to remove it from here. So I should fix that. What the? Ah, oh, that the wrong place. If previous state does not equal event, that's when we want to remove that. Whereas, otherwise, it's like if it was the event, remove it, which is, oh, that's wrong. Oh, it's still. What did I do wrong? Did I save it? Now the event triggers. At this point, the base is overrun. Nothing happens because I haven't done that yet. Okay, um, so that's a good place to stop. Um, and so tomorrow I can come and do the base overrun stuff. I managed to finish the actual playthrough of the tutorial and then maybe put in the dialogues and stuff. I think that's the next step.